Hello, I'm Adam. Recently I've moved to my uh, new home and uh, finally I've got some smart things to do. <laughs> uh, so uh, in this quick video I will just uh, I will just show or take a note uh, how to uh, get work two very nice things. Uh, so the first thing is the Bosch uh, thermostat. Uh, this one is working on Zigbee protocol, so it's nice tools for the uh, home assistant, etc. And uh, this one would work very good uh, in a team with this little guy. This is a Xiaomi thermometer and hygrometer. Uh, and uh, originally those uh, things are working on uh, using the Bluetooth but as we can see there uh, it is possible to uh, flash a Zigbee firmware and let this uh, and let this Xiaomi temperature sensor work at, on Zigbee so that's <laughs> <laughs> that's something amazing because this thing cost about let's say five dollars each so uh, that's my plan to have uh, Bosch uh, thermostats and have uh, Xiaomi sensors in each room so uh, this temperature will be referenced uh, temperature for the Bosch uh, thermostat and that's the plan I, how I would go yeah. Uh, okay, now we need to transform this Xiaomi temperature and humidity sensor uh, to change the uh, communication from Bluetooth to Zigbee. Uh, to do this, I hope, yeah, uh, this is correct, a uh, GitHub page. Uh, I'm using, uh, generally there are forks and it's uh, quite unclear, but I went with uh, DevBee's fork. And uh, so, generally to flash it, w there are there is an instruction. So uh, I've got uh, Bluetooth in my PC, uh, and uh, the temperature sensor is running. So uh, I'm ready to start. Uh, I will start with the Asom tool, and there is a flasher. Uh, and now uh, we are going to connect and as we can see we've got <laughs> detected the uh, temperature sensor now we pair with it it took a while now we press the do activation button Okay, now we can flash the firmwares and uh, as this uh, tutorial, uh, as this instruction mentioned, first we need to uh, flash the ATC OTA firmware. It's some kind of a unlocking thing. So, uh, let's say this is a first step and now I press start flashing. And now we can see the process is ongoing. Okay, uh, we can see the update is done and uh, the thermometer got disconnected. I wait, let's say, a few seconds and uh, you have to remove the battery and insert it about after just a few seconds. So we are restarting the sensor right now. Okay, I've inserted the uh, battery to the sensor. And let me close the lid, but how it was, maybe this way. Okay, it's closed. And uh, as we can see, it got automatically connected, but uh, I'm not sure it should. But uh, let's disconnect and I will show you how uh, it would look, the name would look. And now if we go to the search, uh, we will see ATC instead of the model of the sensor. And you should pair with this one. 
And uh, now uh, we are going to select the firmware from this fork that I mentioned before. And now we can click start flashing. And as we can see flashing started. And now we can see flashing is done and uh, it took almost 4 minutes. And of course the thermometer got disconnected and it will reboot and try to connect to the Zigbee. And uh, from the Home Assistant side I'm using Zigbee to MQTT because the support for the uh, Bosch uh, thermostats uh, and uh, generally Zigbee to MQTT has a lot uh, more uh, devices uh, supported than the uh, ZHC. It was <coughs> ZHA, yeah. Uh, then ZHA. And uh, okay, so uh, now the thermo now the thermometer is about to connect. So I will just uh, allow for join. And as we can see, seamlessly, uh, it joined the network. <laughs> and of course it needs to be configured, etc, etc. Yeah? And bam, we've got... Okay, and uh, now we can go to the settings and uh, generally we can see the values are there. Of course there are some calibrations and a lot of other different stuff, but we don't need to focus on them. Uh, maybe mm, there is uh, one thing... Yeah, uh, in the device settings you need to go to the down, uh, to the very bottom, and there is a home assistant name, and right there uh, I was, uh, I have syntax like and uh, temp kitchen and save. And uh, now uh, the sensor will appear and we can see it's reporting almost 23 degrees and 46% uh, humidity. Okay, and now we need to uh, connect the uh, Bosch thermostat and how to do that. Uh, it's not that easy as the uh, Xiaomi thermometer. Okay, so uh, that's how it looks. And uh, to pair this uh, thermostat you need to remove the battery cover and there you can see there is a QR code which you have to uh, scan using your phone and uh, send it to your PC for configuration. And, but in the meantime you can uh, reset uh, this thermostat if is it, uh, it has part somewhere or something. And to reset it you have to uh, disconnect the battery, press the button and connect the battery. So I will try to do it now. To do that uh, you have to uh, press the button and insert the battery. And now we can see it says res like reset. And we can. Yeah, and there is a version 359. And now it's calibrating. And uh, if you see this symbol, that means it's ready to pair. I've got the code uh, in my clipboard. Uh, so I press, uh, I go to the settings. Then I go to the tools and I go to the add install code. Then I paste this uh, whole code and press OK. Then I go to thermostat and click the button. And now you can see it got successfully configured. So in the uh, devices tab we will see there is uh, another Bosch thermostat. And uh, as we can see, everything got paired correctly. This is the latest version as I'm on the February. Uh, next, uh, pretty nice options. Uh, so, uh, there is a, a temperature which got set. 
And uh, there is a percentage of the pin that got uh, uh, is it uh, opening or closing our radiator in percentage. So zero means that this is closed, so radiator is uh, cold. A mode and uh, local temperature calibration. So if you got a Xiaomi uh, thermometer showing 22 degrees, uh, this thermostat is showing 21. So you could just adjust this to match the temperature. But anyway, it won't work uh, ideally because uh, uh, the thermostat is on the radiator, so there will be hotter. Yeah. <coughs> okay. And now. Same there, go to options, go to options, and I can change it. Uh, okay, so go to options and on the very bottom, and now you let's name it like term, yeah, not the term. And now in our panel, yeah, I know there is a mess, but that's my. Uh, very first days configuring this thing and now we can see term kitchen and uh, temp kitchen okay now what we gonna to what we want to achieve uh, we need to link it somehow uh, let's look at the salon because salon is already linked as we can see there is a, a Xiaomi temperature in salon and it reports 21.4 degree and uh, there is a, a thermostat in the salon and it got remote temperature from the Xiaomi temperature sensor. Yeah? And now we can see there is an actual temperature and I've got set it for 22 degrees. Yeah? Uh, how to do that? Uh, you can do it in two ways. As the, um, as the ZigBee MQTT uh, page uh, is uh, talking about yeah there it is we could set a mqtt request uh, on this topic with this payload and generally uh, i was trying my best and it didn't work i have no idea uh, i have no idea it didn't work for me but fortunately i found even easier way because you don't need to have a console and check uh, that uh, check things what we are writing. Uh, so <clears throat> I did it using automation. Uh, and now I will show you how to do that. Uh, so we need to uh, we need two things. First thing we need uh, a temperature uh, from the kitchen. We press left click on this and we've got uh, not very long uh, history. But uh, go to the gear icon, and now there is a, a identificator of this uh, temperature sensor, and uh, we need to save it and uh, save it somewhere. And uh, same with the remote uh, temperature in kitchen. Um, <coughs> oh, yeah, there it is, and uh, there is. A second. Now we are going to settings to the automatization, and uh, that's how uh, that's how uh, it looks uh, on the salon. So I just had to set. I just had to uh, check how it looks. So uh, I will open second window and create one for the. Uh, for the kitchen, so uh, this one is when some when something changes. So is the maybe there, yeah, and the state. And now we are going to write our uh, temperature sensor there. Okay, and now we are going to paste the correct one. And now we've got the when the temperature. Uh, in kitchen change, uh, changes its value. Uh, next, in the trip, in the action, we need to just add. Uh, let me check. 
yeah, uh, the number value and we could just go to the YAML editor. For sure you could just uh, click it using this one but that would be much easier to just copy and uh, paste it and we need to change uh, two things. Mm, there is a value to be sent and of course we need to send value from the kitchen sensor and there is a, a entity ID of our uh, kitchen kitchen thermostat so I, I pasted it and generally we have to click save okay and uh, as you can see uh, it uh, haven't got sent so I just uh, touch <laughs> the temperature sensor <laughs> I just uh, touch it and uh, as we can see uh, the translation okay whatever we can see the temperature tracking got uh, activated so now yes it uh, changed in the kitchen we've got 22.2 degrees as we can see it's increasing because I touched it <laughs> and uh, yeah now the ter thermostat is following the temperature from the uh, Xiaomi sensor which is great and uh, now there is one thing, uh, one hack uh, to make the battery life in those Xiaomi temperature sensors great. Uh, we have to go to the Zigbee 2 MQTT to uh, correct sensor. Yeah, I'm, I said. And uh, now uh, in the reporting tab, there are uh, values in uh, seconds. Uh, those are intervals for reporting and uh, as we can see the temperature and humidity I have got set for 30 seconds because I don't think I, I needed it uh, more frequent so uh, let's uh, go to the uh, another sensor and let's go to the reporting default is 10 seconds I don't think that's needed and now we have to press apply and uh, yeah it needs time don't click it too fast two things but just write it in the one and click the apply and wait a few seconds and now we've got correctly set and okay uh, but generally anyway this thing is smart because if the temperature will change it will uh, report despite the uh, 30 second cooldown and it won't uh, respond if uh, there is no temperature change, yeah? so that's a very good thing. And yeah, now we've got working thing. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and hit the subscribe button. Bye.